the Hyperloop. There's a good chance you've heard the name by now. This is the Hyperloop system. It can take people hundreds of miles and minutes. The Hyperloop, a series of tubes that would transport people in pods at ultra high speeds over long distances. It's a remarkable new form of transportation that can whisk people from city to city in a flash. 29 minutes from New York to DC, 30 minutes from LA to San Francisco. For years, we've been seeing these futuristic utopian renderings of some cross between a spaceship and a monorail. But lately, the Hyperloop is becoming much more real. Yes. Yes. Companies all around the world have been developing and testing the technology needed to propel passengers at speeds of over 1,000 kilometers per hour. But for many, speed is only the first step to unlocking the full transformational effects of a new mode of transportation. We've got planes, trains, automobiles and boats, we're getting around Earth. But what if there was a fifth mode? And uh, I have a name for it, name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. In 2013, while riding high on the growing success of Tesla and SpaceX, entrepreneur Elon Musk released a white paper outlining the basic framework of the technology he called Hyperloop. The basic idea goes a little something like this. A tube reduces the air pressure to a near vacuum-like environment. A Hyperloop pod is then suspended in the tube, usually by magnetic levitation. The whole pod can then be propelled forward. Because there's no traditional friction sources like air resistance or rolling friction that would push back against the pod, the Hyperloop is able to move at incredibly high speeds and do so fairly efficiently. After Richard Branson would make a large investment in the company Hyperloop One, it would be renamed to Virgin Hyperloop. Josh Geigel is the co-founder and CEO of Virgin Hyperloop. In a familiar tech startup story, he's seen the project go from a garage to a large-scale testing facility outside of Las Vegas. Josh, along with Virgin's head of passenger experience, Sara Lucian, bravely volunteered to take the inaugural ride. The test, lasting only about 20 seconds and covering only a quarter of a mile at just over 100 miles per hour, is a long way away from a true functioning Hyperloop. But as for optics, it's a crucial step for the future of funding. But convincing investors and governments that would likely be fronting some of the construction costs for an unproven technology is no easy task. First and foremost is the question of safety. But beyond safety concerns, constructing hyperloops will undoubtedly require a significant capital investment to the estimated tune of around 60 million US dollars per kilometer of track. So a track from San Francisco to Los Angeles, for example, is likely to come with a price tag over $10 billion. And before large governments are willing to come in and front those costs, investors who are funding Hyperloop development must accept it as a long-term mixture of technology and infrastructure investing. Envisioning the ripple effects of what Hyperloop could achieve, though, is fairly challenging at this stage of development. It's fast, yes, but for point-to-point -point travel, traditional maglev trains can move pretty fast as well. And outside of China, South Korea, and Japan, even those haven't seen much adoption elsewhere due to the high costs and questionable profitability. The Shanghai Line in China, for example, loses around $100 million every year. Hyperloop companies, however, believe they can offer something different than traditional railway lines. Liverpool to Manchester, is a five or six minute journey. Manchester to Leeds is also a five or six minute journey. What that effectively does is create a single super city economy. In this vision, the Hyperloop acts a little more like a highway, where pods have fixed destinations and don't need to stop along the way. Meaning you can travel on a Hyperloop network from say, Liverpool to Leeds, while the pod behind you travels from Liverpool to Manchester. And if that Metro Hyperloop network is connected to other networks from the same location, you could travel from Liverpool to Paris or Liverpool to Amsterdam, all without making a single stop. A multi-regional Hyperloop network could become a replacement for both short haul passenger and cargo flights and traditional ground transportation, both of which are significant carbon producers. Hyperloops will still need to use electricity to both move pods and maintain the near vacuum environment in the tube. 
Proponents of the technology believe that this can be done by using renewable sources, including a combination of solar panels and battery technology that could be used along the Hyperloop itself. But even with all multipliers of time and carbon emission savings that a Hyperloop network may provide, the investment capital required to actually build such a network becomes even more economically and politically daunting. One company in the Netherlands is working to develop that technology, and perhaps more importantly, the international coalition needed to make the Hyperloop network a reality. And while this testing tube might not seem as large as others, inside is a key technology to create the on and off ramp type infrastructure of a Hyperloop network, that is, a lane switch. The nice thing about this magnetic levitation system that we've developed is that there's absolutely zero moving components in the track. And whenever the vehicle enters a switch, it either pulls itself to the right with its magnets or it pulls itself to the left with its magnets. Lane switching on traditional rail requires the physical movement of the rail. Even modern magnetic levitation tracks use lane switching techniques in order to transfer trains from one track to another. The moment that a track is switching, that means that at that moment you are creating an unsafe environment for the trains behind it. So you need a lot of space between trains. But in a hyperloop, because you have no moving components in the track, all the vehicles can be much closer to each other. You can achieve a very high frequency and basically have your vehicles moving and merging in and out of the network very much like a highway. For now though, Hart's physical testing has been limited by the size of their tube. Because the test track is only 30 meters long, they haven't tested this lane switch at speeds greater than 20 kilometers per hour. However, the company is working to build a new test site where it plans to increase that testing speed to 300 kilometers per hour. In order to help build this coalition of private and public interest in Hyperloop development, Hart in 2018 partnered with other Hyperloop companies from Europe and Canada. The goal was to define, establish, and standardize the framework to regulate Hyperloop systems. One of the most important goals for Hart is interoperability, which is essentially making sure the different systems can communicate with each other. Interoperability is so important because what we want to achieve is actually uh, have this seamless travel experience. The idea being that as companies around Europe create the first commercial Hyperloop tracks between individual cities, one day those can all be connected to a larger network. Hart's next plan is to build the European Hyperloop Center, an open testing facility which will include a 2.6 kilometer test track. And the company hopes to test travel speeds there at up to 700 kilometers per hour. Virgin Hyperloop is also racing to construct the first commercial Hyperloop route, with projects in various states of development in India, Saudi Arabia, and the United States. Recently, the company announced plans to build a Hyperloop certification center in West Virginia, which will include a six mile long test track. Proving the technology here will be crucial if Hyperloop networks can find a home among infrastructure investments that the Biden administration hopes to make. Back in 2013, Elon had an idea. I think the difference now in 2021 is some brilliant engineers have spent real time uh, grinding out the details. And I thoroughly expect the next three to five years to be decisive. 